Hi guys, my name is Lisa Whitehouse and I'm the artist behind Whitehouse Art. Thank you for joining me today for one of my mini tutorials. Be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see other videos like this one. Let's get started. All right, so for today I'm going to be walking you through how to paint a couple of or a few cute stockings. Um, because I have three kids, I'm going to be painting three different stockings. I started by drawing out a loose sort of outline of how I wanted them to look, along with the string in the background holding them up. So for this one, I'm trying to do three different styles. So I did one with spots, one plain, and then one that I'm going to have stripes on. And keep in mind, these can be very loose and you don't have to have them perfect. Different sizes, different droopiness to them. That's how stockings are. So it's good to have a bit of variety. So don't worry about getting them perfect. For mine, I'm going to be using a mix of reds, pinks, a little bit of orange, and maybe a bit of yellow as well inside the stocking. Um, for the line, I'm going to be using uh, black, and then I'd like to have a little bit of teal in the background. So with watercolor, it's important to work from lightest to darkest. You can choose to either come in after with the background or go in before. In this case, I'm going to go in after. So we're going to start by doing the stockings themselves, and we'll do the background after. So first things first, I'm going to do the spots. So what I'm going to do is put some clear water on each of the little spots. And we just fill in some clear water. And this can be fairly loose if you miss a spot. Um, if some of it's left white, that's quite all right. Then I take my small brush, a bit of red, and I just drop the red in. And I let it bleed around. And I'm going to put a little bit of red down in each of them. We're going to be able to go in after and erase some of this pencil. So don't worry too much if you're not covering all of it. If you find that they're drying, the little clear water spots are drying too fast, you can go in and add clear water again as you're making your way around. They do work fairly fast, but if you find that you're a little slow to begin with, that's quite all right. Like I said, you can just go in and re-wet them or do a few at a time. Now I'm going to add a little bit of pink on top of the red just to add a little bit of visual interest. And then I'm going to use a tiny bit, just a tiny little bit of yellow on some of them just to make them rainbow without being too rainbow. Trying to keep this painting relatively simple. So I'm going to take a little bit of red again and go and just add a little bit more to some of these that are lightening as they go. I want parts of them to be lighter than others. So and then as it's drying, I'm going to go in and add sort of a loose outline, not covering all of the stocking, but just a little bit. It's a very simple painting, so we don't need it to be too detailed. So now I'm going to take clear water and I'm going to gently massage some of those little outlines just like this with clear water. Oop, grabbed a little bit of the dot there. That's okay. Because this is loose watercolor, it's okay for that to happen. Just massaging some of those. So that they're not as strong of lines. And this is where it's okay if you touch a little bit. Then I'm going to take a bit of clear water, a little tiny bit of yellow, and just add a few water droplets in there, a little bit of red on the actual stocking. I do have quite a bit of control with this brush. It's a small flat brush. If you get any outside of it, I would just dab them up for now because we are going to be going back and adding a bit of a background on this. So you don't want any of the droplets to be outside for now. So that's all I would do for stocking number one. Now for stocking number two, we're going to add a little bit of blue where the white of the stocking is going to be. So for this one, it's here and here. Actually, I'm just going to erase a little bit of that line where I don't want it. 
you can erase after, but sometimes if you know for a fact you don't want that there, it's okay to just take it off at the beginning. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna do clear water on the top and not through the whole top, but just a little bit. So I'm just using different pressures on my brush so that the ver it's a varied amount of texture. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of the Prussian blue and lay that down in there. Just because sometimes the white has a little blue tinge to it and this helps it just pop a little more. This is a thicker stocking. one dry for a little bit before I do the red and I'm gonna move on to my stripe stocking now for this one I want to have a complete um, sorry I want to have some shading behind it before I go adding the stripes and the easiest way to do that is to do it before adding the stripes it's a lot harder to go in after the fact so what we're gonna do is throughout the whole of the stocking I'm gonna add a very loose wash now this isn't covering every single spot you'll see I left this all with no wash and there's even some parts here where there's no wash and I'm gonna take the red and I'm gonna just drop that in now I'm keeping it very light for this taking a little bit of yellow we're gonna be going over this again with actual darker red stripes but this is just giving the stripes a bit of a background color When I start a painting like this, I don't necessarily have a strongly determined plan. I like to just have fun with it, see how it goes, play around with where I want the colors to go. So that's all I would do for the background on that piece. And while I was busy doing this one, this blue dried quite a bit, enough that I can then go in and add the red now. So what I'm gonna do is add a clear wash through this whole piece. And if you have areas that are thicker water than others, that's totally okay. That'll just allow the water to bleed in some parts more than others. I like to keep this line fairly uneven because this is a very plush stocking as I mentioned before. This is all we're doing is just building up the red. I sometimes like to work around the outside first and then add in some in the center. It's gonna continue to lighten as it dries. That's quite all right. Add a little bit of pink over here, a little bit of orange over here. So this is a not good opportunity now that this one's drying um, to come back to this piece. And all I'm gonna be doing for this one is to go back in and add a bit more dark red in some of these dots. Fine, so I'm going to add a little line there. So 
now I can see that I've done that. This one is lightning again, so I'm going to go back and add some red again. I find that on these types of paintings, I'm always bouncing around from one spot to the next. So now this one should be fairly dry. I'm just kind of touching it to get a sense of how dry it is. Making sure there's absolutely no pooled spots. I'm gonna go ahead and add the lines now. So the way I'm gonna do the stripes on this one is to do like I've done on all the others and add clear water stripes. I'm gonna do a few to start and see how I like the look of them. The reason I like to do the clear water first is because I like the way the clear water allows the paint to sort of bleed in and have a very uneven look. With a looser painting, you don't want everything to look too perfect. Having them fill in more in some spots versus others is actually a good look for this type of piece. That's exactly what you want for loose watercolor. So you'll notice I do a lot of the wet in wet technique. I'm actually gonna use my thin brush because I found that other one a little bit harder to control. So this is just my small liner brush. And I'm not putting a brush stroke through the whole thing. I'm allowing the water to carry some of it. that's all I want for that stocking. I'm keeping them all fairly simple as I mentioned before so we don't need too much. So this one's just about dry now. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more red around the outside and we're gonna have to let everything dry so that we can do the background. Just adding detail where I wanted to make sure I had some. And for this one, I just want to add a little bit of clear water drops just to loosen it up a little. Some of those lines are even a little more solid than I want them to be. So if I add some clear water drops, some of them will bleed together. As you can see, as soon as I do that, some of them bleed out. Same with this one. If I add some clear water drops, it just loosens it up a little. Add a few yellow ones here. And then I'm going to clean up the background. So that's all I want to do for that. And now we're going to let it dry. It should take about 10 minutes to dry, and I'll come back and finish off the background, and we can go from there. Okay, so now that the stockings have had uh, about 10 to 15 minutes to dry, I'm going to go ahead and add a background. So I do the background the same way I would the stocking, just by adding clear water in and around. So I'll start by going here, just beside the left stocking, and working the clear water in and around. So I'm not filling in the whole background, and I'm not going right up to the stockings. I'm going close to them, but not directly beside them. We'll start with this much, about half of it. And I'm having the background just kind of be a light wash behind it. It doesn't need to be anything too strong. So sometimes it's hard to see where you've already gone, so if you just start near the stocking and see where it starts, where it starts to bleed to, where it doesn't bleed, you can tell where you've gone. I'm going to add a little bit of the blue up here. And so this isn't about filling it all in. It's just about having a little bit of a background. 
get it to bleed more, you just add a bit of clear water. If you find some areas are dry like that, you can just take clear water and then butt up against it and it'll bleed. So that's kind of the look I want to achieve all the way around. I like to keep turning my canvas, or sorry, my watercolor block, just so that it's easier to make my way around. I'm alternating what colors I go. this it's important to move relatively quickly just because you don't want it to dry too quick as you're going around and then it won't bleed nice. You can kind of encourage it by tilting the canvas all around encouraging it to bleed outwards. blue right here, a little water, and then I'll just encourage it to bleed out. It's cooling a little bit too much to the right, so I can just take a little bit of paper towel and dab a little bit of that up. So I'm just wanting a light blue background, nothing too dark as I mentioned before, just a little bit. This can either represent snow in the background, something kind of wintry, or just a faded, just a faded background. Dab up some of that. And then all I'm going to do is take my flat brush again with a little bit of blue paint and make my way around, adding a few splatters. So that's all I would do for that. Now we're going to have to let it dry again, which will take probably about another 10 minutes. Um, it helps if you take up some of the really strong um, pigment where there's quite a bit of water pooling. You can kind of pick some of that up. We want the background to be light anyway. So, so that's all I'm doing is just picking up a bit of the background. And then once this is fully dry, I'm going to come in with my Payne's Gray or Black and fill in the string and just recontour some of the stockings to just make sure we have that differentiation between the stockings and the background. All right, so now that the background's had enough time to dry, we're gonna go back in and add some of those finishing touches. So for this, I'm gonna use Payne's Gray and add a thin line representing where the string would be holding up the stockings. Now this dot line is incredibly thin Notice it's a little wet here and it's bleeding and that's absolutely okay with loose watercolor. So I'm just gonna let that happen. So that's all I wanted to do for the line. I'm gonna darken it a little bit right here. And then I wanna just add a few details on the stockings themselves, separate it. Here, where it's really blending together with the background, I'm just going to add a bit of a thin black, nothing too solid. And with this guy, 
I'm letting the brush skip off the page quite a bit so that it never appears to be a solid line. Making my way around. This is where you're just fine tuning some of those little details. So taking my red, solidifying some of those lines so that they stand out a little more. Now in my case, because I want to make a Christmas card out of this one, I'm going to go ahead and add the initials of each of my kids on top. So we're going to have, this one's going to be X, make sure this is dry. This one might actually be dry enough to write, that should be fine. F. And then a K. So that way I can say Merry Christmas from each of my kids. And I add a few splatters on just at the end, a few final touches over top and then I like to do a couple of clear ones over top of those so that they vary in size and a few teal ones and that's pretty much it so once this is all dry I'll go ahead and erase all of the pencil lines but that's pretty much all you want to do so it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be areas where the paint bleeds, areas where it doesn't, and that's the beauty of watercolors. You can have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I think it makes a cute little Christmas drawing. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope you guys had fun. Be sure to check out my other videos for more inspiration and leave a comment below with some ideas that you want to paint. Thank you and see you next video.